sharing. Just a second, Flamma uh, Mira. I'm, yes. I pressed recording. So now we're starting oh. again. Now we're live <laughs> and we're recording. Hi, Flamma Mira. Okay. Hi, Erica. After the technical problems we just had yes. that we are connecting yes. now. This is the yes, but everything is figure outable and we are here now finally so we can we can start our today talks. So hi Erica, you are so inspiring uh, woman for me. Please could you tell about what are you doing and what's going on now? Now is the music coming. <laughs> oh wow. Where did that come from? It's not in my computer. <laughs> oh, music coming. <laughs> oh my gosh, I know it's on. It's okay. On. okay, okay. Let let the music play. And <laughs> oh wow, this is interesting. What is happening <laughs> there? Okay, <laughs> this was so. actually on the Facebook because this is transmitting we are ah. for the first time we are talking on Zoom but it's also transmitting live on Facebook automatically a video has come up and started playing so this is as an explanation what just happened so hopefully now we are going to be non-disturbed okay okay but now it's the time to talk about about your wonderful work, Erica. So could you tell, tell, uh, share with us your story? What are you doing and how did you become to it? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, it all started with picking up my own unique destiny thread. And to, to really go back, um, I'm originally from Kazakhstan. And my family moved um, to, to Germany when I was nine years old. And uh, most of my life, I felt disconnected from my, uh, my sole purpose, what I came I here for on earth. And I felt alienated and really uprooted. So I was not very happy most of my life. And what happened to me was two years ago, I started to, do, to read a book. Um, one of the Anastasia books, um, there are 10 all together, by Vladimir Mekri, about a woman from Siberia, Anastasia. Anastasia. And in one of yeah. those books, a very sacred um, traditional embroidery is described. And I started to remember that something is like moved in me and I thought like, oh, how interesting. And I started to research it and and I uh, attended a workshop on the German um, uh, Slavic island, Rügen. And I've learned how to, to do a destiny towel, which is called Rushnik, which you see here. And it all started two years ago in May 2017, when I learned from Nadjeshta. And I received my own sacred symbols and what they mean. And I started to literally weave my own destiny and picked up my own unique destiny thread so that's when I started to remember and after that I felt the urge to really connect with the land and my ancestors so I did a, um, a journey with the trans Railway uh, all to Siberia and Kazakhstan and Mongolia and during this trip I was planting my Celtic my Celtic birth tree seeds and was continuing embroidering and learning from other women uh, about their own uh, sacred art, embroidery art. So it was this destiny thread which I picked up and folding bit by bit. And on this journey, it became more and more clear to me what I came here for. And wow, very nice. So, and then it continued that um, I wanted to connect more consciously with the soul, our unique uh, soul seed or destiny thread. And I learned to become a, a soul-based coach. And for me, it's really like this destiny thread unfolding, that now I've got to choose how to connect with our soul, which is the bridge between the body and the spirit. 
to, uh, to be more clear about our life's direction. And so also to hold space for other people to get their um, destiny threat revealed. So that's why I call myself a soul-based coach and destiny weaver. Very nice. And how it works, how you can help people to connect with their soul? Well, as a soul-based coach, I've learned that there are what we call clean questions, which lead ourselves to the answers inside, because we all carry all our answers as souls inside. We just don't know how to tap into them. And through the help of this clean language and clean questions, I'm able to support uh, women to connect with the soul and furthermore, since I've learned the art of sacred embroidery, I also work uh, with sacred symbols. You've done a, a, like a reading with me. Um, yes, yeah. I draw a self-stitched uh, goddess symbol, and then we see what is unfolding and expressing to you. Yes, for me, if I can share my experience with oh, this yes, symbol. <laughs> It, it was very, very nice. Uh, my symbol, I was surprised because my symbol is the wealth and abundance. And I didn't feel before like, oh, I'm not really wealth or, or so. But after I, I was connected with this symbol, I, I was able to see abundance every day in, in my everyday life, like some small pieces it was like small things but when you can see it as an abundance so then you are prepared for bigger things and to to feel wealthy and to live in abundance which is not only material it's like in abundance like a state of mind so I'm very happy with, with my symbol. It really worked. Have you figured out like your own ways how to connect with this energy, specific energy? I Yes, I was uh, drawing my symbol and I look at it and I'm connected with it like every day visually but the feeling is that yes i can i can i can become aware of all this abundance in my life which i didn't see before it for example when i i wanted to buy two croissants and the woman says oh today we have an action uh, buy two and three is free and before it was like oh okay but now it's oh wow it what a sign of abundance in my life what the gifts uh, everyday life brings to me mm. so it's about that i'm more aware of my life and uh, of abundance in my life mm. i can feel more gratitude for it so it it feels really good, yes. Mm. Well, I'm very happy to hear that. And this is a very similar process, like with this thread. It's inside us, it's invisible. But sometimes we just need something to make us aware uh, of this invisible thread or like this invisible abundance energy. And now since you know the simple and it's expressing to you, is it right that you start to see it all around? Synchronicities arise, symbols, and people who remind you of that. And, and, and this is for me the sacred path of this destiny thread revealed. And, the, and then the more aware we become of that process, then it comes to this co-creative destiny weaving. And that's why I also opened this group where we are now uh, doing this interview yeah. uh, for me it's like yeah the more we are aware about our soul purpose our destiny threat then we also wish to co-create 
yeah, to, to create something new together. And this is something very dear to my heart. Yes. So how do you, do you mean this group? What, what should we do or what is uh, the mean? So now the screen, what? screen has been frozen. Now here, now you are. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, did you hear my question? Um, I think you asked me with this group. What's yes, yes. My aim. What's the meaning? Yes. What's your aim with this what's group? Meaning. Well, for me, it's like when people go on this journey to discover why they are here, to discover the destiny of Fred then it's also part of giving back those gifts what we came here for and um, with others. And then we can really create our, our own reality. Everybody can do, can do that. And, and it's a, um, for me, it's a great passion to work with other people who also want to co-create like an, a new fabric of life, like based on on love, on sustainability, um, yeah, on peace and freedom, like everything which we envision, uh, I think, all together, like this new evolutionary humanity, and start to consciously weaving it into existence. So it doesn't just stay a vision, but gets manifested in the real world. And, and I think we are very powerful as human beings, if we know what we came here to do, and then we come together, it's a very potent power in the most positive sense, that we can really catapult each other to this new evolutionary humanity. So, uh, if I understand it good, so we can help each other with our gifts, in this group and cooperate or just uh, to visualize our our better reality or could you give some example what uh, could i do uh, what does it mean this co-creation in uh, some doable actions or so and I was very inspired by my um, former mentor, Barbara Max Hubbard, who was to me the, the most influential futurist conscious thinker. She passed away this year in April. I found her always very inspiring and I'm part of her Evolutionary Ambassadors Academy. She called to life and, um, and she worked on this co-creation handbook, for example. I've got this in German but you can also buy that in English. And her suggestion is that when people come together in co-creation, co-groups, yeah, when people find their sole purpose, their vocational arousal, how she calls it, then we come together and join our geniuses in small groups working on what is our soul calling for. And then we can really in a great way and very quickly uh, help support this evolutionary impulse also globally. It starts with us, but if we are in full potential and in groups, and if there are more and more groups coming like this in synergies, in co-creation, co-groups, like she calls it, then everything is possible. So my idea is like to call together people, what are they more most passionate about? Is it development of business? Is it like community, special community building? It could be anything that they're, they're coming together and by coming together and staying in contact and developing together, then you comes out from this. So it's not, it's not known, but the main thing is that people come together and start to co-create together and then see what happens. Yes, so we can uh, let uh, our intuition to, to lead us and do things what we feel we maybe can do and just to stay in contact 
and share our ideas or our feelings mm -hmm. and then we'll see what Absolutely. Could. and there are exercises obviously if there are limiting beliefs coming up there are exercises how to work on the limiting beliefs how to create your vision or how to discover your soul purpose i mean this is my speciality i just call it um for discovering your own destiny thread it's another metaphor for your soul purpose that's why i feel my calling is as a soul based coach and a sacred weaver to uh, hold space for people to discover their own soul purpose and there are different ways how to come together to co-create okay so i i'm sorry just a second okay uh, so i know that you created an online course for to to learn every these skills and everything so can you talk a little bit about what people can learn in your online course yes it's very very new i've just created it um last week um it's based on it's called six weeks destiny weaving soul journey and it's based on six chapters of my forthcoming book which is also called the weirding way the mysterious art of weaving your own destiny and in the six weeks um i mean if people are interested they can get in contact with me i've got uh, it's very detailed information about that where i also did a video explaining each week which is a, a natural cyclical process it's like the seed is planted it's our soul seed our destiny thread is planted in the dark which carries all the information already inside and like the seed and we then in the dark soul we build roots and then after we grow further we leave the soil i call it leaving the comfort zone and then we face limiting beliefs our shadows traumas and then we grow further once we integrate and transcend it then we can reach our full potential and once we reach our full potential then the co-creation part starts which is like we want to share our gifts with the world. It's a natural process. So I also call it spreading the seeds. And then the co-creation properly starts. And, and it is a journey, like I tried to explain to you, it was happened to me as well. So that's what the course is about and my forthcoming book as well. Wow, and can you talk a little bit about your book? yeah with the book um it's a lot about my journey so far which i have uh, explained at the beginning but also with uh, with my experience uh, of being initiated by the by the norns the norns are from the norse mythology and they sit by the world tree yggdrasil in norse language and the three norns are called urt Verdantin school and they stand for the past the present and the future and as the myth goes they weave the destiny of all physical realms of all physical matter which you see around you so these are some very powerful beings and it happened to me when i continued to embroider and to dive deeper and deeper into my own calling that the norm of the present Vedanti, she appeared to me and she started to transmit this knowledge of weaving destiny to me. And this book describes this in great detail, but also with some explanation about the symbols which I've learned so far, and also my destiny dress, where has got like certain goddess and uh, symbols. So um, this is what my book is about wow interesting and when uh, do you expect uh, the book uh, will be finished i hope by the end of this year i would like to birth it wow at, at the end of this year 
Uh, the latest uh, by the beginning spring by next year, because I feel I'm already in the midst of living my next step unfolding. <coughs> Sorry, I'm a bit uh, ill. <coughs> Which means diving even deeper into the symbolism. So that's why I've applied to study for a PhD. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, I've applied to study for PhD at the Californian Institute of Integral Studies. They have got a, an amazing department about women's um, spirituality and philosophy. And I feel that this is weaving to me to, to, to dive even deeper into this um, sacred symbolism. Yes. Nice. Okay, so thank you very much for your sharing and would you like to tell something at the end of our interview for mm. who are watching yeah i would like to invite um the people who are already in this group i mean this is not a coincidence that we came together so far to share this co-creative destiny weaving space so i like to invite you to to um, to think about it which co-creation group you want to be part of it's it's like a sense of paying it forward I, hope, uh, I don't know if you know this movie paying it forward with the little boy because that like if you want if you can do something good and pass it forward to three other people who then themselves pass it on to other few people and it's like if even two like we come together or three very conscious about what they want to create then amazing things can happen if that spreads as fast as possible so i like to invite you to also come together in groups uh, doing calls like we're doing now organize your own and yeah to really bring forward this new fabric of humanity yes very nice like we are co-creating together because i would like to make an interviews and you are doing all this amazing thing so thank you very much for sharing it and thank you all for watching so bye yeah thank you slava mira <laughs> also for sharing the space with me and asking the nice questions and yeah for really co-creating with me this is yeah yes. fills me with joy and it's a very sacred process thank you very much okay thank you bye